And now I'm going to go on to the proofreading tools. So to proofread your application, we have this different button here and we open up a different side panel. And I'm gonna make it nice and wide here to make it easier to see everything. And to do the proofreading, you just click the proofreading button. And then right here inside Word, we have our proofreading results. And the way our proofreading results work is we have a bunch of tabs for the different kinds of things that we check. And the idea is that you just go through the tabs, you, you, you look at the, uh, the things that we found and then you go ahead and, and fix them. And I'll walk through a couple of the tabs. I don't have time to, to go through all of them. Um, if we start with the overview tab, um, there's not much proofreading in this first tab. The really only proofreading we do is we catch if your abstract has exceeded the word limit of 150. Um, but other, that, other than that, we just have a summary of what's going on in your application. And we have a claim tree as you can see here. Um, but let me go to the numbering tab. And here, what we do is we look for any kind of numbering error that you can think of. For example, if you skipped a claim number, if you repeat a claim number, stuff like that. Uh, and we also look for claim dependency errors. And we have an example of that here, as you can see in the red text right here. So at claim three, claim three is a system claim that depends from claim two, but claim two is a method claim. So, you know, of course that's not good and that's something that you need to fix. And in addition to showing you the error, we wanna make it as easy as possible to go ahead and fix it. So we have the blue arrows here as well. And when you click on this blue arrow, we automatically scroll the patent application to claim three. So you see the mistake in claim three, it, it's very easy to then go to claim three. And I'm gonna go ahead and fix the mistake. And then I'll click the proofreading button to redo the proofreading. And now we're back exactly where, where we were before, um, but that dependency error is now gone because I just fixed it. So let me go to the antecedent basis tab. And this is one of the key parts of the proofreading because it's very easy to make mistakes uh, with antecedent basis, as you all know. So the way that we do this is we show you the claims and every phrase that needs an antecedent basis has been highlighted. If it's highlighted in green, that means we found an antecedent basis, so it's okay. If it's highlighted in yellow, it's a warning because it's, we found a partial match, so it might be okay, it might not. And if it's in red, it's an error, and it's almost certainly a mistake that needs to be fixed. So you can very quickly see uh, where you've done well and where you need to take a closer look to fix uh, antecedent basis errors. Um, but on top of that, we want to help you diagnose. And the way we do that is if you click on this yellow box, we bold these words where they appear in the claims. And you can instantly see that this is referring back to these first authentication credentials. And sure enough, the word first is missing in the yellow box. And that's something that I would definitely want to fix. So I'm going to go ahead and click that blue arrow to scroll to claim one. And I'm going to fix the antecedent basis error by putting the word first in there. And then I'll go ahead and click proofread to redo the proofreading. Um, so now we're back where we were. And that yellow box has turned green because I just fixed that antecedent basis error. Um, all right, so let me go on to the word support tab. So what we do here is for every word of your claims, we count the number of times it appears in the detailed description. And if it appears there a lot, we will highlight it in green. If it's there a little bit, we highlight it in yellow. And if it's not there at all, then we highlight it in red. So you can very quickly see where you have good support and where you have weak support that you might want to work on. And on top of that, there's some more details. So if you hover over a word, you can see more. So for collecting, we found the word collected, collect, collection, and so forth. We're not looking for the exact word, but we're also looking for these kinds of word variants because you know, any of these are good enough to provide support for the word collecting. And then for words with, with weaker support, like transmitting here, you might want to take a closer look. And we help you do that. If you click on the word, we pop up the paragraphs from the specification where you use that word. So you can see that paragraph 42 is the word transmit and paragraph 86 has the word transmitted. 
So this way you can quickly see exactly what the support is that you have for this word. And you'll see that we also put the blue arrows here in this pop-up. So if you want to go to paragraph 86 and maybe edit the paragraph to use that word more frequently, you can go ahead and do that. Um, now we're, you know, instantly at paragraph 86 to, um, you know, make any changes that we want to make. Uh, phrase support is similar to word support, um, except now we're just looking at phrases instead of words. So it's the same highlighting, the same hovering, and the same clicking. Um, but I'm just going to skip over that because it's mostly the same. Uh, if we go to the reference labels tab, um, for your reference labels, you probably also want to cross-check against your drawings. And we have boxes up here to select your drawing, your drawings files. And for that, we can do PowerPoint, Visio, or PDF. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and select the PowerPoint drawings that I used for this application. And then we click the proofreading button. So now we're redoing the proofreading using both the text of your patent application and the drawings that we've just um, uploaded. Uh, and then down below, when we show you the proofreading results for reference labels, we do it in this table, as you can see here. And the first column of the table, we show the reference labels that we found. And then in the middle column, we show issues in the detailed description. And then the last column, we show issues in the drawings. And uh, I'll give you a quick example of, of what's going on here. So if we look at reference label 120, uh, that is used in the drawings at figure one. Uh, and it, in the specification, it was used with the phrase voice bank twice and server once. And because it was used with two completely different phrases, we mark it as an error, you know, something that you, that you want to fix. Um, and as before, we want to help you diagnose. And the way that we do that is if you click on the number here, we again pop up the paragraphs from the spec and we show you all instances where you use the number 120. Um, so we can see here in paragraph 12, we have voice bank 120 and we have server 120. Uh, and actually, you can also see here that server should be 110. So we can go ahead and click this blue arrow to go to that paragraph. And then we can fix um, the server 120 to instead be server 110. And uh, we also have those links on the phrases here. So instead, you can click on server. And then we go directly to where you use server with 120. Um, as opposed to clicking on the number where we show you all instances of the number. And the idea here is we're just trying to make it as easy as possible to get the, um, the information that you need. Um, all right, the next tab is for figure numbers. And uh, I'm going to skip over this in the interest of time. But the basic idea here is that we make sure you've used all the figure numbers in all the places that they need to be. Uh, it's pretty easy to make these kinds of mistakes. And uh, you know, we catch them for you before you file. Um, next tab is for patent profanity, and this isn't real profanity, but this is the use of limiting words that um, you might regret later on because it might limit your invention in ways that you don't like. Um, so we have a list of limiting words that we look for. You know, these are words like absolute, always, you know, things that you have to be careful of. And down below, we show you the text of your patent application. And we've highlighted these limiting words to make it easy to see, make it easy to review and quickly see if you've used them in a way that you don't like. Uh, and then the last tab uh, is just a link to our art unit predictor. And this is just a reminder to people who, uh, to our customers who have the art unit predictor, just to make sure they don't forget to use it before they file their patent application. Um, so that is basically it for the proofreading tool. Uh, for proofreading office action responses, it's mostly the same thing. So I'm not going to go over all that. There are a few additional things for proofreading office action responses. Um, one example is we check your claim status indicators. So if you've amended a claim and you forget to change the status to currently amended, uh, we will catch that for you. But you know, other than that, uh, it's mostly the same kind of thing.